In this episode, I'll quickly run you through several language changes that are new in Java 9. And let's start right off with change number one, the way we create collections in Java. Up until Java 9, you had to write something like arrays as lists, one, two, three, four, to create a new list of integers. And now all our collections have nice little factory methods, so you can now write list of one, two, three, four. You can also do a set of one, two, three, four. And by the way, you cannot go set one, 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 two, three, four, because you'll actually get an illegal argument exception because of the duplicate ones in your set. And you can also write map of John, Snow, Tyrion, Lannister, which admittedly feels a bit clumsy because there's no arrow like in other languages, but it's a star to create new maps. Good. On to change number two, the way we work with optionals. And there's a couple of changes with optionals, but first let's create a simple one like optional of John Snow, so just a string. And now in Java 8, you could call if present on an optional, which did something if the optional had a value, so if it wasn't empty. But what about the case that it didn't have a value? The else case. And you had to do some clumsy workarounds for that. And now they added the if present or else method. So you can actually go some customer if present or else. And if the customer is present, we're going to say send an email to the customer. And if not, then we can do something entirely different, like sending an alarm to our customer ops guys or reporting guys or whatever. Also, you can now convert optionals to streams and call all the stream functions on it, which is nice if you want lazy initialization. That means only execute all stream functions if the optional has a value and not if it's empty. But you'll have to look for real life use cases yourself. Change number three, which also looks a bit cosmetic to me, there's try with resource improvements. Imagine you want to get a database connection in Java. And then later on, an exception happens. And in that case, you have to make sure to close the connection that you open up, at least up until Java 7. And starting with Java 7, you could simply write try connection connection. And then the connection got closed for you automatically, so you don't have to do a manual cleanup. And now in Java 9, you can now get the connection somewhere outside that try block, like so. And then simply later on, write try connection, which has the same effect, which will automatically close the connection for you in case there's an exception or not. And the change looks a bit cosmetic to me because it remains to be seen how often this can and will actually be used in the real world. On to change number four, which actually might have some use, and especially if you're using web frameworks like Wicket, which has a lot of anonymous inner classes. Let's quickly create a static abstract class, maybe text field, and give it a type parameter, type T, and then also add a private T, T field, as well as a constructor which initializes that field. Now in our code, let's create a new text field and make it an anonymous inner class with the curly brackets. Initialize it with some number and then extract a variable out of it. And up until Java 9, you also had to specify the type here integer for anonymous inner classes. Otherwise you get a compile error. And now you don't have to do that anymore, which will save you some code if using specific frameworks as mentioned, like Wicked. Change number five is about interfaces, because interfaces can now have private methods. And what does that look like? 
imagine we have an interface called Womanizer. And the Womanizer interface has a public default void method Womanize. And inside, we simply do a system out print on maybe my name's Bond or anything really. But then again, imagine you want that method to call another method, a private method that shouldn't be available to anyone else implementing that interface. So it's only going to be available in that very interface. And now you can have a private method like Bond Peacock, which does another system out like so. And you can see that everything compiles fine right now, and it wouldn't have compiled with Java 8. But if I now try to implement that interface in our main class, and then override the womanize method, I can see that I'm not allowed to call bond peacock anymore, because it's a private method, and it's not available to implementers of the interface. And that's actually quite a nice change if you want to encapsulate some functionality on your interface without it leaking to the general public. And the last change uh, we're going to talk about in this episode, change number six, has to do with a couple of new methods for streams. And they now have, for example, two new methods called take while and drop a while. And they're easiest explained by an example. So let's create a stream of A, B, C, also D, and F, G. And suppose in our example, we're only interested in all stream values which have a string length less than two or equal to one. So it's going to be A, B, C, but not the D, E values and not the F, G values. So we can now call take while. Uh, the string, string length equals one. And then for each, we just do a system out print on. And that should basically print out all the stream elements up until it encounters something that does not match the take while directri uh, directive. So something that has not a length of one, which would be A, B, and C. And drop while is the very same thing, but in our example, it will print out DE and FG because it would drop A, B, and C because they match the length directri uh, directive. Let's quickly run it. Our code compiles, runs, and then you can see ABC in our take while example and the DE and FG in our drop while example as expected. As always, you have to see what the real life use cases are going to be for that. Congratulations, you got a quick overview of what has changed in Java 9. And there's quite a few more changes than these language syntax changes. And that's why in the next episode, we'll have a look at Java's new HTTP client and how it compares to other HTTP libraries, such as Apache HTTP client or OKHTTP. Okay Let's jump right in.